It's time for Jadong. Jadong versus Lore, that is. I am Wolf. With me is Kaldor. Happy Kaldor. Happy Kaldor. Kaldor's day just got better. My day got so much better. Did you find a coin in your shoe? I found the Yongwa coin in my shoe and I checked it's actually worth a lot. Awesome. And I also got news that apparently the landlord of my apartment is currently at the scene of the crime and took care of things, so it looks like I can sleep in my own bed today. That is good to hear. Sounds like you got a good landlord, man. Yeah, and oh, what? You know what I just saw? I didn't believe that it was this bad, but I actually just saw Stefano, and he looks like shit. Where, where, where did you see him? I didn't see him. Oh, now I see him. Yeah, he's back there. His hair color? Oh my god. And guys, I, I apologize for the expression that just slipped my lips. I'm really well, sorry. Yeah, that, that wasn't intended, but he looks like... He looks interesting. Yeah, he... He, uh... You know, I, I talked about it a little bit earlier. Uh, Thorzane and I were talking about, we thought that, you know, the color was a little bit... A little bit? It left a little bit to be desired. A little bit? A little a, a listen, lot to be desired. When you go to the club, though, you go to the dark room, no one can really tell. No one can really see. I looked at him and was like, buddy, are you serious? And he's like, ah, don't get me started. I don't like it. And I'm like, well, we can shave it off. That's okay. I got the clippers back home. <laughs> he actually thought about it. Well, you know, I think he would look awesome with a You could just re dye it, and if that goes wrong, then you can clip it. Yeah, the thing is, you know, it can't be worse than that. Basically, no, <laughs> yeah, basically, no. It can't be. Um, I mean, I've seen pictures, but pictures don't do it justice. It's it's certainly true. Uh, by the way, look at Laura's win rate 3 and 8. That's pretty abysmal. He has not done very well in the GSL, whether it be individual league or GSTL. He's struggled a little bit, but this could be his chance. He's qualified for Code A multiple times, including this time he is quote unquote a new player, wearing the new MVP jersey up against fan favorite Jadong here. Jadong, I would say the favorite here, given that how quickly he's gotten good at StarCraft 2 and also how, uh, you know, how poor so far with the results we've seen from Lure have been. Yeah, as I really have to say that we have with Jadong a player that is just getting better the entire time, every time he plays. He's like Flash, both of them. People expect a lot from them, and uh, they weren't able to climb the mountain that is Code S just yet and really excel in Code S. Jadon was able, well, they both were able to really do well in the up and downs. In the end, uh, Jadon got at least in uh, to the Friday group, whereas we had for uh, Flash uh, only a th uh, fourth place. But still, doing like really well in Codes and getting into like the round of eight or something this is uh, a goal that both of them still haven't achieved just yet. But they're getting constantly better and it's really a pleasure to cast their games and watch them. Yep, good to see they are improving. Jadong versus Lure here at the GSL Code. Let's jump into Belshire Vestige, which by the way is a good map for the Tyrant. To the top left in the red for the team, Evil Geniuses, he is... EGTD Lady Court. This is another roadblock for his opponent, uh, having to play against the Zerg on this map. And there's Jadon, one of the fastest players that we have in Soccer Few. If you ever watched his stream, you can certainly agree. Bottom right of the map, we have his opponent. Yes. MVP Luo, former OGS player. Yep. He's, uh,. One of the few OGS players left to still be on one of the kind of original ESF teams that we had. Hello from Australia! Well, hello to you too. Okay, now I have a question. I'm not quite sure if they actually listen to what we say, if they have the earphones, but why on earth would you visit Korea in January or February when you're from Australia? They have the best weather in Australia right now. Maybe they don't like the heat. I don't like the heat that much. I prefer the cold, actually. Yeah, but you are weird. I am weird. That's true. But maybe we they're weird too. That maybe you, they're weird too. You hate dessert. You don't like fruit. Well, I like brownies. I just don't like ice cream generally, or cakes, or gummy bears. Really. Guys, you should have seen him in France. We went to the best French restaurant, French restaurants, and he's like, nah, I desserts. Just really dessert I don't want it. I'd rather yeah. eat some more potatoes or something. Yeah. Um, keep the fruits away. Keep the fruits <laughs> off the table. Um. I have a strictly non-fruit diet. Sometimes I drink orange juice, but it's it's the only thing. Fresh pressed orange juice in the hotel provided by uh, Iron Squid. It was. I tried really to drink it. Yeah, you tried. You took a sip and then you looked at me weird and you're like, I don't like it. I was like, ah, this has pulp in it. You're like, it's fresh pressed orange juice. I was like, ah. 
<laughs> exactly. I don't know if I can drink this. I need well, some artificial flavoring or something. Yeah. <laughs> that being established in Korea, it's cold, and in Australia, it's very hot and actually pleasant. To most people, not to the wolves among us. Maybe you. these girls who are from Australia just like the snow, so they just constantly go to where it's snowing. Imagine if you had that much money, you could just be wherever you want the weather to be all the time. You just If the weather changes where you are, you just go somewhere else where the weather is the opposite. Yeah. That would be cool, man. Oh, I would like that. Maybe right now, Korea is actually a little bit too cold. If you're greeted by massive amounts of snow when you come back and you were hoping for a bit of a warmer weather, then uh, yeah, that's a little bit disappointing. Be it as it may. By the way, this is a weird build yeah. from Lore. He's just... I mean, he's going double gas off one base as Protoss against Zerg. Like, are we gonna see? And we're not even seeing a Sentry expand. We're gonna see. I thought we were gonna see Stalker pressure, but he's actually just killing the neutral depot and not even sending his Stalker down. I would like to see the Inca Memorial build and the Dark Shrine. Now, that would be cool, man. That would I think really just throw just for funsies. It would really throw his opponent off. Now he thinks <laughs> maybe there's gonna be an expansion, and there is gonna be one. This is I, a weird build. Nah, I would have loved to see the Inca Memorial build. Well, as a both former OGS, yeah. Yeah, as a former OGS player, would have been, you know, and then the game is over and you just like, for Inca. Yeah. May he know. never be forgotten. And then he plays the next two games straight up. By the way, uh, GSL coming up. Inca is on Azuku. And this will be a, a definitely another chance for him to prove himself. And with Heart of the Swarm coming up, maybe Inca has has some new career moves. The Dark Shrine costs a little bit less than Heart of the Swarm currently at 150, 150. We have a Stargate. This is a weird build by Lure, and I like his choice to go for a build like this because this is something that Jadon is not really going to be that accustomed to facing. This is something you don't see very often in Korea, especially not in the GSL. It's old. It's weird. It's kind of like your like chemistry teacher from 7th grade. Old and weird. <laughs> 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 so I'm saying, man, I, I figured if I if I took a shot in the dark there, probably true. Seventh grade chemistry teacher, old and weird. Yeah, same with like physics. Yeah. Well, right now we have a bit of link pressure in the third base, so uh, I'm actually really interested to see how Jadong is gonna uh, play this. If he he gets his third base up and he adds now the additional gas, so we have him on uh, two extractors. He's gonna add more. There's there's another one. And uh, he will be completely fine against the uh, gateway pressure of his opponent thanks to the extra queen that he's currently building. And his creep spread is also quite decent, of course, wants to connect the third with the natural. But now with those links, he still has the map control, so he can make sure that he spreads them out and sees early on what's uh, happening, because at this point, he doesn't really know about the tech choice. Yeah, he doesn't really quite know. He's just being very safe. He's playing this as if he's faced a more fast expand almost. Just getting his lair, his roach horn, and his evolution chamber. All three of those things are, are basically safe. The Roach Warren allows you to make roaches if you need them. You can also attack with them. Lair allows you to tech and also get an Overseer. Evolution Chamber gives upgrades and support callers. So it's basically the catch-all three structures you want to build at this point. Yeah. And we just have one Void Ray. We'll see if he shows it. Does he have... Void ran a phoenix, and he's hiding them, it looks like, unless uh, I'm mistaken. Where are those? Yeah, they're, you know, they're hidden. I was just double-checking the gas, because so far Lua only had one probe in one of the gases, and usually we see at least two of them, because you get uh, roughly 80% of the gas mining compared to three probes. But with only one gas, that sounded very deliberate, but just a few seconds later, he pulled another two probes off the mineral line and sent them into gas, so it was apparently just a small oversight and him losing a few precious seconds where he was trying to scout for these overlords and mackling. Yeah. But I love it when uh, you see really a player who uh, has the perfect amount of probes in us uh, in, in gas because he has a perfectly well timed build in the early stages. Uh, yeah. It was always a pleasure to watch. By the way, Jadong here, even though he scouted this border, does not have any additional defense for his queen. So he might find himself caught like a uh, student who doesn't know how to convert from Kelvin to Celsius because he's gonna lose an overlord here and the queen is it's actually finally gets that score call up. The Voidra is a little bit late to the party. That was scary though, that Queen is a little bit alone over there. He's gonna make another Spore Crawler just to be safe, I like that. But at least the Queen is hugging the Spore Crawler that she has, so that gives her a bit of company and a bit of safety too. Yeah. Too often we see those Queens just wandering around. Queens and Spore Crawlers don't really get that. They don't really though. like each other that yeah. much. Yeah, but I don't know why, they serve the same purpose in as certain as scenarios. That's absolutely true. You know, this is so scary when you have only three Phoenixes gathered, you can't quite do much damage to a Queen, but when you get the Voidra oh! there as well... What are you doing there? Oh, that Voidra needs to... Make better life choices. 
Yeah, there but here we comes go. the second Phoenix, and now it's a party. But bam, another Eight. queen down. Oh, he could have gotten that queen potentially, but he decides to play it safe. It's actually yeah. intense. I actually like that he played that a bit safer. The queen was still at the swore collar, so that was a good choice. He still does some damage. And Jadom suddenly with a lot of Zerkings here. Does yeah. he have a Bane Nest? Not as I don't far think as so. I'm aware. I might have missed it, but... No, I don't see one. I'm checked everywhere. He's just making a lot of links. He wants to be very aggressive at the front, but with a wall like this, I just don't see what he can really accomplish. If he breaks the wall with roaches, that's one thing. Yeah, but does he have enough? Yeah, he only has nine roaches, so he might be able to snipe he's, it. He's just not dealing with these void rays in the main base. When there's a, a bunch of phoenixes in your main, yeah, eventually you're okay. Again, with some, some spore callers, but with... Avoid right there as well. You're going to start losing your evolution chambers if you're not careful. That means no more spores. He's losing the overlords. He's losing his drones. And, and he's not attacking at the front. Exactly. He's not attacking. And even if he does, there are four sentries. If Lua pays attention, he will be able to force field everything out. Oh, wow. He's going to go for these queens. Pulls the void right away. It's down to eight hit points left. One queen goes down. Will he be able to get the second one? Pulls the void ray away. Does not target the void ray. Phoenix is get away, and Jadong goes for the attack now. There's a Colossus out there with all these zealots. Jadong didn't kill a single unit. Not nothing. a single unit. Oh my no god. No resources lost. No probe. No nothing. And Lua already did so much damage. Jadong lost more than 1,200 minerals at this point. And oh he is god. still not done. Those Phoenixes are everywhere. He is, it, is it possible Lure plays a perfect game? I think we've only seen this once in StarCraft history. I highly doubt it'll happen, but man, so far... Look at how he uses his Void Ray. Three kills, taking all those queens out, always pressuring Just the them. extra damage. Eight hit points left. If there were an assist count on that Void Ray, it would be quite high at this point. Yeah. Uh, I mean, there's a lot of links out here for Jadong, but he just can't quite make use of them. And now, this is rare, but in this situation that Lure has taken this third base, it's like, how does Jadon actually approach this? With the new destructible rocks here, it's a little bit safer to take that third on this map now, but with this many Colossi, Jadon cannot approach this boss officially. He loses his own drone trying to make a fourth. Lore is so map where this is not the lore we saw in Kode last time, that's for sure. Yeah, that is definitely for sure. You're so right. And currently what we have is Jadon just trying to find an angle where he can do some damage, and now it's not the perfect game anymore. Aww. One pylon is down. And the second one is going to be defended. But also look at the upgrades that we currently see for our Protoss player. Plus two armor, going into plus two attack. He has a lead in the upgrades. He is in a very, very comfortable position. Has his third base. And Jadong is not really... Jadong is looking at this like, okay, this is not going well. I'm trying to take my fourth base round. I have my investors out. I can buy some time. I need to do something. I need to get some time to get ahead in economy. And then maybe I can carry the effect over. Transition and take him down. But being down against the Protoss player at this time of the game, 14 minutes, that is not it's really what not you're aiming for. Not at all. That's like, ugh. It's definitely not, it's not a situation you want to be in at all. And Lure knows about this fourth base. He decides not to pressure it since he already, uh, you know, killed the drone earlier. He may try to it's go like, and get some drone kills later, but he's already got so many Colossi coming out. Yeah, it's like, it's like when you go to a public toilet and you sit down and suddenly there's this squishy wet feeling and you are like, oh, I hope this is water. And yeah. this is exactly how Jadon feels. Yeah, I think that's exactly how he feels, man. Then you look and there's no toilet paper and you're like, oh, uh, this is just yeah. not going to be a good situation. That's when you get to talk to strangers, meet new people. Wolf doesn't analyze StarCraft right now. He actually analyzes my weird metaphors and uh, is just bringing to another level. You start checking your I pockets and you're like, well... <laughs> <laughs> do, I really some tissues? do I really need that receipt? I'm not sure. <laughs> I don't think so. <laughs> Well, but Jadong, he found some toilet paper, uh, spine crawlers, and he is oh, using it. Good fungal here. Yeah, with a good chain fungal, he can at least take down those. Yeah, those phoenixes. That's what you for later on, because yeah. then they can't lift the uh, investors. I mean, oh. oh wow, nice catch on that investor. This is like when you find uh, toilet paper on the back and you see those behind you, you didn't know about this. They're all long, but these spine crawlers are just not quite ready yet. He gets another fungal on the phoenixes, but. He needs to deal with those Colossi somehow, and so far, not so good. He's trying to go for a counter attack, but this is a lot of pressure from Lua, and Jadon is really in a tough spot, even though he's ahead in supply. Tight the base wall here. is being defended, exactly the wall really tight. Can he, oh, he can't get the sentries. Yeah, he forced the cancel on the sentry by killing the pylon. That was a very close call there. But still, the damage is being done. The next warp in should be able to deal with these units with good Blink Stalker Micro. 
needs a micro though if he's gonna do that. Yeah, those Zotus are doing a lot of damage regardless. And here comes another round of warp ins. The big problem for Jadon is really that Lua has such a huge force. The upgrades right are so good natural. for Lua as well. Exactly, the advantage. We talked about that earlier. The double forge that he has with the Chrono Boost. He is so far ahead. The Spine Colors, they help him. But is it enough? It I doesn't mean, really look like with it. Plus two armor, you very rarely see us on Frost with Guardian Shield as well. Against only plus one Lings, they're just not going to do anything. I the don't. attack is cleaned up at the main base, and Lure is now 50 supply ahead. I think he's taken Jalong out in game number one. GG. Look at that. Lure is on fire here. This really well is played. Not the Lure we have seen in the past. This is. You know what that is? This is him being in MVP now. Yeah, man. We talked about this in the early group. The, these MVP guys, they are rocking the GSL right now. They are so good. Finale, he did not really live up to the expectations there. But if you just look at the MVP players in general, we have, with, of course, Dong Regu with Sniper, now with Lua. A lot of players that have so much potential. And for some reason, in the last few months, they've been able to show it. Yeah, you know, I feel like some of the newest talent is coming out of MVP. Even if it's a player that we've known before, like Lua, who most people looked at Lua in the back and go, oh, he qualified, good for him. I wonder how he's going to do. Probably not too well. I mean, the same as, as we thought, you know, kind of like this guy is, he's had shoddy results in the past. Maybe he's just going to get 2 0 easily by Jadon here. Now he's up again with beautiful play. He was using some, some old styles there, going just into a Stargate off of one base, something that we very rarely see more. So creative play into standard macro, keeping Jadon on his toes. Jadon's defensive as Queens was a little bit off, I feel, and a yeah. lot of damage was done there. I agree with you. That was a bit shaky what he showed with his defense. The Queens were quite often completely out of position, and he lost so many of them. But it, I don't think he really expected this much commitment to the air attack. So many Phoenixes later on, then the Void Raider was added. I feel he felt, okay, I can defend against this easy, and then it turned out he miscalculated a little bit, and from this point on, he just fell farther behind. But right now, it's going to be a different story. The next map is going to be Whirlwind, and let's see if Jadon can force game number three, or if Lua is continuing the theme of the day and is going to 2-0 his opponent.